What up, YouTube? Uh, today's video is going to be on the Personal Armor System Ground Troops or PASGT helmet and the vest. The helmet and the vest comprise the system. Obviously, two components. Self-explanatory. PASGT stands for Personal Armor System Ground Troops. Uh, but before we get into that, I'd like to answer a question that was posted on a previous video. I think it was my rucksack video. Uh, a user asked, how do you wear an Alice rucksack, a medium or a large, uh, with the LBE the way I had it set up in the videos? So here's my LBE. I've got the pistol belt around your midsection. It's above your hips, but below your ribs. Uh, right around, you want the buckle pretty much on top of your belly button. Um, like I said, don't put anything on your uh, LBE suspenders. Some units wanted to put your uh, first aid kit case on your suspenders. Don't do that. It gets in the way of the, the Alice Ruck. Here we have a medium Alice Ruck set. Shoulder straps. And you just throw it on over top. Uh, the user said that when he did this, it was kind of uncomfortable. It didn't rest right, as you can probably see. You're going to want the base. Put it up over your canteens and your butt pack. And just kind of let it rest that way. And then cinch it down. Like I said, this is why we don't want anything on our LBE suspenders, because your uh, your rucksack straps are going to go right over top of them, and you just carry it in like this. Uh, it's pretty simple stuff. It can be done. It might not be the most comfortable way to wear it, but that's that's what we had to do. Um, granted, this is a medium Alice rucksack, and it's not fully loaded. I've got like a sleeping bag and some other bullshit in there, uh, but it's it's not a 50-pound rucksack. Um, I guess the way he, he talked about with your uh, your Alice suspenders, you'll have these straps and the buckles that adjust vertically up and down. Uh, when you're done, you just roll up the excess and tuck it into this elastic band. It'll go over top like on this one. Uh, the same on the back. Now, if you get old surplus suspenders, they might not have that little elastic thing because it gets worn out over time and some soldiers will just cut it off and you'll just have the strap hanging. It's no big deal. Um, one way to do it is if you're wearing the rucksack and it's, it's really big and sagging and it's, you've got no room, uh, just lower the whole system. Undo these buckles and adjust it down. If I can get this thing like that. You're basically just going to loosen the buckle up and let it go down. And the same with the back and the other side to where your whole LBE goes down a little bit to where it is around your hips and that will make it, make it easier for you to carry the rucksack. Uh, but in my opinion you don't really need to do that. Just keep it the way you had it and throw the rucksack on over top of it. Uh, in the rucksack video we discussed the, qu the quick release on the, uh, the Alice rucksack strap. It's basically this thing. If you pull it that whole strap's going to go, so uh, do it this way. You know, you're walking, you're going through the woods, bang, bang, oh shit, we're in contact. Bang, bang. You know, you just pull one of the straps, the strap will come loose, and let the other side just slide off your shoulders onto the ground and get in the fight. So that's how that's done. Alright, so I moved it outside because it was getting way too hot in that garage. Um, but anyway, it's back to the main video. Uh, the PASGT, Personal Armor System Ground Troops, helmet and vest. Uh, you might have seen some of these. Uh, p people call it a flak jacket or whatever. That's basically what it is. Um, it's a Kevlar vest, uh, soft body armor, and it was, uh, you know, don't call it a bulletproof vest because it's not. It was actually never intended to stop any bullets. Um, it probably will stop some pistol rounds. Uh, that seems to be the majority of, of what people think. Uh, I've seen it on various forums and there's even videos on YouTube. People you know, get one of these at a gun show for real cheap or something like that. And okay, well, let's shoot it. Um, it will stop bullets in, in some instances. I mean, guys have shot at it with uh, 357, 44 Magnum, uh, 9mm, 
and lower powered rounds like that, you know, even like a 38 or whatever, uh, I just, and even higher power rounds, like I mentioned, the guy shot 9 mil at one of these and it stopped it, but that's not taking into account the the back face deformation that you're going to get with it, because it's, it's, I don't know, got some heft to it, I'd say maybe a quarter, quarter inch thick of soft, soft Kevlar, um, it was designed to stop shrapnel from either grenades or artillery or mortar fragments, you know, stuff like that. It's a flak jacket. It was never intended to stop bullets, but that being said, it can stop bullets in some instances. For all you people out there that, you know, got one of these, oh, I'm, I'm going to test it. No, don't do that, man. <laughs> like, if you have a vest that's that shitty, just just message me and, and send it to me. I'll, I'll pay for the shipping. Um... <laughs> Stop destroying these things. Alright, there's plenty of videos on YouTube already where people have shot these things to shit and done their own tests. Um, but, so, I mean, it'll protect you from fragmentation and shrapnel and, uh, and some bullets, but if you get hit with a bullet with this vest, you're going to have serious back face deformation and probably broken ribs and internal bleeding. Um, anyway, it's a front opening vest. Uh, those, by the way, the, uh, the rating, I guess, that pe most people have come up with would be, like, a level two. Uh, it was officially, you know, on, on this note that it's front opening, that's why it was never given an NIJ certification. Uh, like, you see Kevlar vests, you know, level two, level three A, uh, stuff like that. They never rated this because it's a military vest, not a law enforcement vest. The criteria for the testing, the way they did it, was it has to be one solid panel, of Kevlar in the front and the back. It has to be like a side opening vest. Uh, this has elastic straps sewn onto it. You can't get into it from the side. Therefore, it's a front opening vest and they never rated it MIJ. But from all everybody's home tests and the videos on YouTube, it seems to offer like a level two protection. You know, some lower powered rounds and even some higher powered rounds. But uh, like I said, take into account back face deformation. So it opens in the front with a strip of Velcro and three other pieces of Velcro. This goes there, closes up. It's got two pockets on the front, just cloth pockets. Uh, it has some webbing here. This is not Molly webbing. It's not Pals webbing. It's got a slot here. It might look like it. This came out way before Pals or Molly. Um, this middle slot is actually unusable. It's sewn straight to there. There's one here and one here, and these, I guess, were originally designed to hold grenades. You know, just clip a grenade to your vest. Now, it's not really smart, but whatever. Uh, it has elastic here for the shoulder pads. That's one of the things that makes this vest stick out is the shoulder protection. Um, two snaps on the front, two snaps on the back, and then uh, the sides. Got reinforced uh, another layer of nylon on either shoulder. That's where your rifle butt's going to go. So they figure that's a high wear area. So has the instructions for care and the size is a medium. Probably too big for my skinny ass. Uh, in here is a pocket. And it should have the book: Use and Care of Body Armor, Fragmentation Protective Vest, Ground Troops, and 1981, look at that shit. Uh, it explains what does your armor do. Approximately 75% of all combat casualties are caused by fragments from mines, mortar shells, grenades, and artillery fire. Um, you know, they're taking into account World War II, Vietnam, you know, Battle of the Bulge, just artillery fragments shredding dudes because they didn't have vests. So, that's basically what this was designed for, was protection from fragments. It is not a bullet vest, but it can be. Your armor vest may save your life. Be your own inspector. That's, that's standard with anything. Not just the vest. Not just the helmet. That's anything, man. Take care of your shit, and it'll take care of you. Um, instructions for cleaning. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's, that's pretty cool. This stuff is almost collectible with its age. Like I said, 1981. We're talking about 30 plus years ago. Uh, but it's still going strong. It's good stuff.
and you can find it for relatively cheap. I got, I've got several of these PASDT vests. I got one at a gun show for like 25 bucks. Uh, the guy had two of them. I should have bought both of them, but I bought a nine mil that day too, so I was kind of trying to watch my money. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's like 25 bucks for Kevlar vest. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, you can find them on eBay. You know, check your local thrift stores. I've seen them in thrift stores, garage sales, uh, stuff like that. This will go back in there. Um, there seems to be a good bit of them on eBay. You just gotta check regularly. They're not on there all the time, but uh, I don't know. Every couple weeks, look on eBay for PASGT vest, and you should be able to find them for 100 bucks or less. I'd say a hundred bucks is pushing it. I'd pay a hundred bucks if it was brand new, never issued. Um, but if it, if we're talking a used vest like this one, I'd say maybe sixty or seventy bucks tops is what I'd pay for it. You know, it's it's old, uh, therefore it's you know the armor isn't going to be under any warranty. I mean, it's military surplus anyway. You're really not going to have a warranty. But um, as with anything, armor kind of has an expiration date and that's that's give or take uh, you know, it'll, it'll probably perform the way it's intended for years afterward but um, like I said probably a level two protection against uh, lower powered pistol rounds and against fragments uh, it has a collar has these shoulder pads has back has the uh, elastic straps and uh, pretty much discussed everything on that. The helmet. The helmet is hardened Kevlar, not soft Kevlar. Uh, it's about a half an inch thick. And again, this was never designed to stop bullets. Um, it was designed to protect from fragments, you know, shrapnel and stuff. Uh, that being said, it will protect against bullets in some circumstances. It depends, man. Bullets do funny things. And, uh,. <laughs> It's, it's really just luck of the draw. Uh, when I was in the 5 and 9th at uh, Fort Polk, uh, down at battalion headquarters, they had some second lieutenant's helmet from Iraq, and he got shot with an AK, entered about here, and traveled up three or four inches and got lodged here, the bullet did. And there was a big bump in the Kevlar. Uh, you know, guy probably had, got his dome rocked pretty good that day, but, I mean, it saved his life. Uh, the general consensus with the helmet is that it offers probably level 3A protection. You know, we're talking 9 mil subgun and less. Uh, but I mean, obviously, in you know, other circumstances, it'll stop rifle rounds. You know, AK or what? It just depends on the bullet speed, trajectory, uh, the range, um, just stuff like that. I'm going to do a separate video on the helmet itself, maybe. Or I might just tie it into this video, I don't know. There's there's quite a few accessories, and I'm going to take this thing apart fully and then put it back together and show you how to do that. Uh, you don't really have to do that with the vest. It comes the way you need it. Uh, but with the helmet, all, how to adjust the, the suspension and the sweatband and all that sort of thing. So Anyway, these are on eBay, too, by the dozen. Uh, it's easier to find the helmet than it is the vest. Uh, you can find these on eBay for 50 bucks or less. I'd say 30 to 40 is where I see most of these. You know, medium, large, small. Because, um, I mean, with the Army, pretty much all branches replaced this with the, the Mitch helmets or the ACH, Army Combat helmets. Um, and all this system is obsolete. Fucking mosquitoes. Uh, this was used, like I said, from the 80s up until early 2000s, you know, 2001, 2002, 2003. Uh, you might see some of the guys in Iraq wearing, a lot of guys in Iraq wore these helmets initially. Uh, a new buddy that went to Iraq with this vest. Uh, but this was replaced by the ACH and the Mitch helmets. And this was replaced by the Interceptor body armor, the IBAs. Um, but yeah, we'll get into this uh, real quick in a different video. Or, uh, but anyways, like I said, cheap stuff, man. The vest, you know, 60 to 70 bucks, maybe 75. 
and the helmet's 40 to 50. Pretty decent, you know. About 100, you know, 150 to to 200 dollars tops for a body armor system. All these guys on YouTube with all these plate carriers and Molly stuff, and it's like, okay, you got rifle plates. Do you have any soft body armor underneath it? No. Okay, you're gonna be hurting. Uh, even if you do have soft body armor underneath, do you have a helmet? All these guys, man, I see all these tactical videos, people running around in plate carriers and baseball caps. Where the fuck is your helmet, man? You need, <laughs> I'm telling you. Helmets. Helmets, helmets, helmets. Uh, these guys act like they're going to go to combat in a fucking baseball cap, and that's just not the way it is. You need a helmet. So, helmet's a good investment, and for, for less than 50 bucks, get a fucking helmet. It's just a smart thing to do. So...